What's up guys? Uh, is it Michaela here and I'm very excited because we're about to start uh, building the thermocycler. If you have not seen why I'm building a thermocycler or what project I'm actually working on, highly recommend you click this video right here. Uh, secondly, before we get started, it's important to understand that this is for science and informational purposes only and only for curiosity. I know it's really exciting at the thought of being able to make a test at home, but that does not mean it should be a substitute for any professional medical opinion. This is the internet, so I want to make sure that everyone is very clear to not try this at home for reasons other than purely for scientific pursuit. Disclaimer aside, let's build this thing. Does that not look beautiful or what? So the thermocycler is a machine that goes from one temperature to another to another very quickly. So in order to build this, we're going to need some sort of holder for the test tubes. That's what this chassis is going to be. It's going to be made out of aluminum, so it conducts heat extremely well. And it's going to have two holes in it to fit both test tubes. In the indents, there's going to be spaces for the heat sources, which are going to be two wire mount resistors. The current's going to flow through those resistors and heat up the chassis. For the cooling, we just have a simple 12 volt fan that's going to provide a bit of cooling. Now to sense temperature, we're going to be using a thermocouple soldered into a thermo amplifier. Um, this is going to turn thermal energy into voltage that the Arduino can read. And that's pretty much the entire design. So let's get building. Guys, it came in! I'm so excited. Let's have a look at it. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that. This is where the resistors will go. This is where the tubes fit in. And this is where the heat sinks will go. As I was finishing up the construction on the resistor circuit, I realized there was trouble in paradise. Okay, so here's the thing. So the more I'm building this, the less confident I am about it actually working. Traditional PCR machines increase the temperature by around five to six degrees per second. Using just two resistors to heat this thing up, um, I kind of ran the numbers and it's not gonna work. I also looked on the blog post page and it said that the entire cycle time for this particular development uh, was close to three hours and traditional PCR machines take 45 minutes. This isn't just, oh, it'll take longer and that's fine. It's the reaction will fail if it takes too long. If the temperature doesn't ramp up or down the right way, you're not going to have the best and most consistent replication of your DNA. The other problem is the cooling. There is no way you're gonna be able to cool something five to six degrees per second that's this size with a fan. Okay, to the whiteboard, I guess. And so with that, I tried to fix some of the thermodynamic issues that I had found with the original design. By enclosing the heaters in the metal, we get a more efficient temperature conversion. And by using a thermistor instead of a thermocouple, we could have a more robust temperature probe. Now to determine the rapid heating and cooling rates, I decided to use two 40 watt ceramic heaters but we need to first figure out how much aluminum was needed to actually be able to 
get that five degree temperature increase per second that we are looking for. Once we found out how much aluminum we needed, then we had to translate that into how much volume of aluminum our chassis could be, which we used the density of aluminum for. That was pretty easy. Lastly, we just had to make sure that that volume of aluminum could be designed in a way that fits both of our heating elements and two PCR tubes. Taking the measurements of the heating elements and the PCR tubes, found out that a very, very small, on the order of tens of millimeters, block of aluminum could actually house both the heaters and the tubes while satisfying the volume requirements that we found out using our heat transfer equations. Well, we took care of the heating, but how about the cooling? Like I said before, a fan wasn't going to cut it. I decided to use liquid cooling instead. We could take a CPU heat sink and pump cold water through it, and that would take away way more heat than we ever could with a fan. Just to confirm that using a liquid cooling system actually gave us the right amount of heat, I just had to confirm that the heat it took away is roughly the same as the heat that the heaters would give to the aluminum block. And with that, my design for the PCR machine I call the Liquid Cycler is complete. So it's going to be a much smaller aluminum block than we had before, and the heaters are going to be inserted inside the block rather than just sticking off the sides. It's still going to hold two PCR tubes, which is good, and all it's going to use is an AC to DC adapter attached to a relay to power the heaters. The Arduino is going to handle all the decision making, the thermistor is going to be inside one of the PCR tubes, and the liquid cooling system is going to be glued to the side. So with this basic design, let's go back to the real life me to construct it. This is what I actually look like, by the way. I decided to add three holes for the PCR tubes instead of two because that'd be less aluminum to have to heat up and also we could put the temperature probe in the middle hole. All right, so I got the oh, hello. got the temperature sensor in. It's called a thermistor. Looks like this, like that. And it's this little bulb, uh, which changes the resistance of your circuit based on temperature, which is great. Uh, so now we can use that with the resistor, uh, put it all up in a breadboard and get this party started. I really should label these drawers. So I'm trying to find something. Ah, wait, is this it? No, oh, found it. This is going to be where our temperature is displayed and uh, it's going to be in like nice little numbers. So it's going to be great. I'm going to connect that right up to one of these. Let's get cracking, shall we? Oh my God, so I was trying to figure out why it wasn't working, right? I didn't read the instructions. I never do that. I do that all the time. But uh, there was a hit. The potentiometer here, this little black piece, uh, actually controls the contrast of the screen. So if you stick a knob in here and twist it, it was like a national like treasure puzzle. Here, hold on, let me just show you. And that controls the contrast of the of the display until it's perfect. Hello world. <laughs> I made it say poop. Check it out. We got temperature readings that don't look ridiculous. Look at that. 21 degrees, that's room temperature. This thing's just chilling out here in the room. It is 21 degrees and that thing is measuring it. 
So that is wonderful. With the temperature sensor fully operational, it's time to turn to the heaters. Okay, now we're gonna start with the heating circuit, which uses two 40 watt heating cartridges. They're super cheap. You can get them for like 10 bucks or something. It works with a 24 volt adapter. So you can buy these also, you can buy these adapters for like 10 bucks. They're low voltage, they're safer than the monstrosity circuit we were building over here. And because we redesigned the chassis, they're more effective. So all we have to do is wire these two resistors in parallel um, with the power source, uh, solder them all together, and then attach them to the relay. All right, the heater circuit is done, and now we just gotta hook it up to the Arduino. It looks pretty good if I do say so myself. But I mean, what do I know? I'm just a disembodied voice. What's up, guys? Okay, so we did it. Um, it's been two weeks, but we made a ton of progress. So not only have we been able to successfully get a temperature sensor going, but we've hooked up our heater circuit and now all that's left to do for two thirds of it uh, is to connect this to the board um, in a way that can be turned off or on. The easiest way to do that is to use what's called a transistor. It's a little thing right here, and it can basically be used as a voltage switch. So this voltage switch is basically going to read a small input from the Arduino, one of the pins, and then output a five volt signal to the relay. The relay will then trigger turning on the heaters. If it wants to turn off, all that the Arduino would do would have to be to remove that small signal going to the transistor. The transistor would then turn off the relay and we wouldn't have the voltage anymore. So I'm really, 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 really excited. So let's do this. All right, well, that was pretty easy. Uh, now we just gotta check to see if it works. Uh, for that, code time. Okay, so the way I coded this up is that once I plug this in, it's gonna sense the temperature. And if the temperature is below a certain point, it's gonna turn on this relay. Now I don't plug the, I didn't plug the heaters in, so we're not actually going to be heating this up. Um, we're setting fire to the table, but it'll just this light will show that current is actually flowing where it needs to flow. So we're gonna plug this in and load up the new program and see if it works. I changed it to 23 degrees because it's too hot in here. Um, so if the thermometer is less than 23 degrees, which it is, it's at 22.08. We're going to put power through this pin. The transistor will allow current to flow through and that turns this relay on. Now I didn't plug this in, so nothing's heated up yet, but now watch what happens if I make this go above 23 degrees by holding it. I'm holding it, it's going up in temperature, up in temperature, 23 degrees, bam. The light is gone. Now if I let it cool back down, slowly, ah, yep, as soon as it gets below 23, relay turns on. So our circuit is working. All right, guys, we...
All right, so this has been an incredible two weeks, really good start. We went from having no idea what we were doing and just following an internet post, uh, machining a random steel block, which was super cool, but finding out that it just wasn't going to get the job done with the math. Then we did what we should have done in the beginning and actually did the math, figuring out a much safer and more effective way um, to get this PCR reaction. Then we wired up our temperature sensor, which works swimmingly, by the way, uh, and hooked it all up to the relay, which is going to power the heaters. So in the next episode, um, we are going to take this and finish it. Um, we're going to add our pump circuit. Where, where are the pumps? Where are the pumps? Where are you, pump? Pump. We're going to put the pump in. We're going to have a pump connected to this entire thing so that if the temperature is above a certain amount, it's going to pump cooling water through the apparatus. Hopefully by next week, uh, the new part should come in from the Artisan's Asylum. Um, and we'll 3D print a chassis up for this thing to hold it all together. And we should have our own PCR machine. Ah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. A huge thank you um, preemptively to the guys at the um, Artisan's Asylum. You guys, I wouldn't be able to machine this aluminum without you. I'm just a girl in a rented house with no access to machine tools. So thank you for that. Um, I can't wait to uh, get this working and installed. Um, and then move on to actually running PCR reactions on this. So thanks for sticking with me. I hope you learned a lot. Hope you enjoyed yourself and drop any questions you have for me in the comments. I would love to answer them. And yeah, until then, I'll see you in a couple weeks, one to two, uh, when I finish this thing and we will have successfully built a PCR machine in our house.